The Oklahoma State Cowboys, their first appearance since their final four run in 1995. They meet the George Washington Colonials featuring the inside-outside combo of 7'1 Alexander Cool and 5'4 Shantae Rogers. It's what we've been working for the whole year and uh, just feels great seeing your name up there and uh, just really excited about the next couple weeks. It's a great feeling sitting here watching knowing we're going to be a part of this. Uh, one of the most watched events of the year around the world and, and uh, it's great to be a part of it again. The Eddie Sutton Show, brought to you by the Johnson Auto Family. Make a short drive, save hundreds of dollars. Johnson's Auto Family, Kingfisher, Chickasha, Enid, and Stillwater. By Phillips 66, the performance team. By Oklahoma Tank Lines, a proud sponsor of Oklahoma State Athletics. And by the OSU Posse, providing opportunities for scholastic and sports excellence. Now, here's your host, Tom Dorado. Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. The Cowboys are indeed back in the big dance, headed to Lexington, Kentucky. And, Eddie, it's always a relief on Selection Sunday to see your name go up on that big board again. Well, we felt uh, very comfortable that we would be uh, invited if we didn't win the Big 12 tournament uh, as an at-large uh, entry. And uh, sure enough, we got it. Uh, we didn't get the seed that we hoped we would get. But uh, we're happy to be back in the tournament. That's the uh, sixth time in eight years, uh, the last eight years. And... You know, uh, that's a reward for the season that you've had. And I'm very proud of this basketball team, 21-6. and six. I don't think uh, many of our fans would have thought at the beginning of the year that we would be in the NCAA tournament with a record like we have. You know, you said right after the game uh, at the, in the Big 12 tournament against Texas, you told us on the post-game show, you felt like that decision would be very costly. It would probably cost the team anywhere between a 6 and an 8 seed, and it did. I thought going into the uh, Big 12 tournament, we were a six or a seven. And, uh, you know, through the years, the tournament committee said that uh, you can't get hurt by uh, your postseason tur uh, conference tournament, but you can help yourself. Well, that didn't prove to be true because uh, we certainly slipped. And, uh, you know, uh, the University of Oklahoma went all the way to the championship game, and I thought they were probably at least a 10 going in, and they didn't improve their position. So. Maybe the criteria has changed a little bit through the years as far as the NCAA tournament committee is concerned. But we, we really should blame ourselves because we had beaten Texas over by over 20 points a week before. We came into this ball game and really spurred it out early, got up 24 to 16. They were playing zone and we shot the ball extremely well from the perimeter and that was a shot by Joe Atkins. And you could tell we weren't aggressive enough offensively though because we only went the line four times. Second, you can see, that's painful. Yeah. But, uh, and Texas is a good basketball team, and we let them hang in there, and uh, they got back in the ball game, and then we finally fought our way back and got ahead, and uh, after playing not very well for 30 minutes to the last 10 minutes, we played well except for the last minute. We're four points up with the basketball and just make too many mistakes, and uh, by losing, we uh, certainly damaged our uh, chances as far as a higher seed in the uh, NCAA. Okay, that game is in the past. Nothing you could do about what happened in the Big 12 tournament. I guess what most people would like to know now, you've had a week to prepare for the uh, trip to Lexington. Have the players refocused, rebuilt mentally? I think so. Uh, I really believe the coaches took it harder than maybe the players. And, you know, they respond a little bit quicker than, than uh, coaches. Uh, but I, we really had good practice this week. You know, it's spring break. And... Uh, the students uh, were gone. They didn't. Our players didn't have to go to class, so we were able to practice twice a day. And I really believe there the excitement of being in the big dance. You know, it is the greatest sporting event we have in our country. And uh, as Chad said earlier, everybody was watching those seedings, uh, those selections. Uh, it's one of the most watched uh, TV shows uh, that there is in the year. And uh, we're just happy to be there. And we're going to go back and play George Washington. I think it's a toss-up game if we play the series. Uh, I really believe we'd split. It just depends on who plays well. And then if we're fortunate enough to win, we get to play Duke, which uh, is certainly one of the three or four best teams in college basketball. We're going to take a look at the entire South Regional when we return to the Eddie Sutton Show. At 
Johnson's Auto Family, we say we're the best car dealer in the country, Oklahoma country. Because with four statewide locations, Johnson's is uniquely qualified to offer big city selection at low country prices. And Johnson's service department is also rated one of the best in Oklahoma. For your next car, truck, or van, visit Johnson's. Now with four locations, because it's a big country out there. Did somebody call my name? The Johnson Auto Family, the best dealer in the country, Oklahoma country. For more than 30 years, Oklahoma Tank Lines has been safely delivering petroleum products to the people of Oklahoma. With a fleet of modern trucks driven by experienced and courteous drivers, Oklahoma Tank Lines transports the energy needs of the state. This Oklahoma-owned and operated company is proud to support the state's outstanding athletes as they compete across the nation. For more than a quarter of a century, when you've seen this sign, you've been assured that Oklahoma Tank Lines has been safely serving Oklahoma. World Color Press wants to be your printing partner. World Color Press is one of the largest printers in the country, offering personalized service nationwide. World Color Press Stillwater, Oklahoma Division has the most advanced equipment and capabilities for the job. Electronic prepress, high-speed printing, customized binding, and innovative distribution systems. Put World Color Press to work for you and make your business a world leader. Call Pat Quinn, 405-743-2840. Well, welcome back to the show. You know, part of the fun, I think, of, uh, of March Madness is everybody gets a chance to offer his or her opinion on who's got the best chance of winning, who'll be the Cinderella team, who has the toughest bracket. Well, let's bring our bracket up right now. And in our opinion, I think we have one that's pretty well stacked when you look at the teams, and there's Duke hitting it right up. You know, uh, the tournament committee tries to distribute the teams equally across the country, but I think sometimes uh, you, when you really analyze one particular region, uh, it might be a little tougher. And I really think the uh, South Regional is probably the toughest one. You look at those ball clubs up there, uh, maybe the upper half of the uh, bracket isn't as tough as the lower bracket. Let's take a look at uh, down. Look at those teams in the mm -hmm. South. You've got Michigan, who's playing outstanding basketball right now, UCLA. Uh, then you look down below that in Massachusetts, St. Louis. But Kentucky, that's a dark horse ball club. <laughs> I watched Kentucky just dismantle South Carolina this past week in the championship game of the SEC. So the, the South, uh, it's, whoever gets to the Final Four in San Antonio, believe me, they will have earned their right to be there. Because everybody has their own opinion again. They, and certainly if you're in that particular regional, uh, you'd like to say, well, this is the toughest competition. But it appears from this particular perspective, you look at those names that we just saw on the screen. Now, there's some pretty uh, potential, uh, potentials there for national championship, let's put it that way. Well, you'd have to look at uh, Michigan, Duke, and Kentucky. <laughs> now, if you're going to name the five or six best teams in the country, I believe if I were rating them, I would rate those three in the top six for sure. So, you know, uh, that, that, that national champion may come out of that uh, regional, but we're more concerned about our team. We want our team to go in there and play much better than they did against the Longhorns. Playing George Washington, uh, Mike Jarvis, outstanding coach. Their their team is a little bit different than ours in that they're big, strong, powerful, uh, but uh, we're a little quicker and sometimes uh, when you have quickness you can run away from mistakes. So it should be a great ball game and, and I think our, our players are excited about the possibility of playing Duke. Mm -hmm. Second trip to Lexington, Kentucky since 1992. You remember the first one, and I can recall going in. We had two wins going in there the last time, but nobody gave us much of a chance against Michigan. We brought out some old footage that may bring back some bittersweet memories for you. Well, <clears throat> this was a game against the Fab Five from Michigan, and there's Sean driving the basket. And look at, uh, we'll get another look here. Look at Brian Reeves, how much smaller <laughs> he is there than what he is today. And Byron Houston, a great player. He had Cornell Hatcher, Darren Alexander, Corey Williams. That team was really an outstanding ball club. That team was good enough, believe me, to win a national championship. 
and uh, we played that we were an underdog in this ball game and there's Corey hitting a, a long range shot. Look at Brian. <laughs> look at Brian. I mean look how much he's matured uh -huh. after this but Rupp Arena is a great place to play having coached there for four years when I was coaching Kentucky I, I think our players will enjoy the atmosphere. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to maybe take them out to a horse farm where all the great thoroughbreds uh, are raised and so uh, it's going to be kind of fun to go back there. I told them uh, that there's a big advantage uh, the fact that I've been in a lot of NCAA tournaments, this is the 19th one, plus, you know, I know at Lexington, I know Rupp Arena, so it should give our young players a comfort zone going back there. I remember you telling me before we went out there, and I didn't believe you until we walked on the court, but you said, when we go to the practice prior to that first game, there'll be 20, 30,000 people in here watching practice, and I thought maybe you were inflating <laughs> the number a little bit, and I'll be darned, my eyes were open. I don't think they had quite that many, but I knew there'd be a lot of people there to watch practice. Uh, when you talk about uh, love for the game of basketball, you get back in Kentucky and in Indiana and that area, uh, there's no uh, place like that. Those people live and die uh, the round ball sport. And what about Rupp? Now, there's a magic to the building, no question. I think Sean's been talking to some of the players about it. Obviously, he played in the building. Uh, when they walk in there, you concerned maybe they have the wide eye when they first walk in? Well, I think they will. You know, that building will hold a lot of hay. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really impressive when you walk in there, uh, you know, and you think of the great tradition that uh, all the great teams that have played there. Uh, I think they'll be a little bit in awe, and I, I think that's why the fact that I've coached there, I think I can settle them down and say, look, guys, this is no different than Gallagher, Ivor, Allen Fieldhouse, uh, or any of the places we play in, other than it's a lot bigger. And as you go back there, obviously there's a – there, there's some people you know still back there. It's kind of like, it wouldn't be old home week, but there are some people who are, are anxious to see you come back. Well, I get to see a lot of my old friends. Uh, we're, we certainly have a lot of people there that will be cheering for the Cowboys. Uh, I think the only problem that I've seen this week, there are a lot of distractions. Uh, yeah. I think everybody thinks I've got a whole drawer full of tickets, and the tickets will be hard to come by. Why do people always think you have tickets? There? I don't know. I think they do every coach when it comes to a big sporting event like this and your team's involved. I think uh, a lot of times fans just think that, you know, the athletic director and the school just gives you, uh, <laughs> you know, as many tickets as you want, and that's not true. Well, the Cowboys, to a man, are very excited about returning to the NCAA tournament. We'll hear what they have to say when we return to the Eddie Sutton Show. new places to eat doesn't take reservations but with meals like this it's always a full house taste what's next pork the other white meat Join the posse today. Well, Selection Sunday excitement returned to Gallagher Iber Arena this past weekend, and it was obvious the players, to a man, were happy to be going back to the big dance. Well, Brett, your reaction to the pairings and where we're headed? Uh, it's great to see your name up there, and uh, 
we got a tough draw playing GW, and then uh, you know after that it's even tougher. So we got to worry about the first game, and it's an eight-nine game. Anything can happen, and uh, we're just excited to be in and get prepared for them. George Washington has a big man in the middle, somebody you'll have to contend with. Yeah, Alexander Cruel is a big guy, a uh, good player, and they have a great team, and uh, it's going to be a tough matchup. you got to win six in a row to win it. You lose one, you're going home, so uh, it's time to step up and start playing basketball. Well, Desmond, you've seen the pairings, you've seen the opponents, your feelings now. I mean, I think we got a pretty good draw. I just think we need to come out these next few days, practice hard, prepare for uh, George Washington. It's a lot of people who've been looking forward to this. I mean, you know, Adrian Peterson, he really needed this. This is something I'm, I'm happy for him and Brad and Chad, you know, and for me it's just a new experience. You know, we're looking for the same thing in the next couple of years. So, I mean, we just come out, we play hard, we, we do the things that coach wants to do in practice and just get better every day. We go out and we do George Washington. That's going to give us some confidence and a little more experience. When we come out and we play against Duke, I mean, that's a chance I want to have to come out and play against some of those players. Cause I'm, I, I met a couple of those players at the Nike camp also. So Duke's a very good team, and, and we come out and just be poised and, and have a lot of confidence. Don't go out scared, and, you know, anything can happen on any given night. Well, Pete, you've seen the pairings. Your reaction? I mean, I think we got a you know, pretty tough draw. With, I mean, any, every team in the field of 64 is pretty good, so we're just going to go out and give it all we got. This is important for the guys uh, who have not been there before. We talked to some of the other players to get a taste of the excitement on Selection Sunday, to get a taste of all the excitement throughout the week. Yes, yeah, um, you know, the past few years we kind of we haven't re really watched it for a purpose. You know, we've just been sitting there seeing what good games going to be on TV. But I mean, it's just kind of exciting to sit in here and you know see what you'll be playing at the next game. Just real exciting to be sitting with a team and you know watching all the parents and everything. We had a real good talk with the coaches today about some of the mistakes we made and. I mean, I don't really think Texas you know, beat us. I think we can really beat ourselves when we went up to the Big 12 tournament. But I think we have a very positive reaction come Friday when we go to Kentucky and we just go out there and play and see what happens. You know, you see people playing there on TV. We hear about how good, great of a place it is to play. And well, all of us looking forward to going to play down there. And what can you tell the younger players about the intensity level? Obviously, you have to experience it in the NCAA tournament. But what could you tell some of the younger players in this room right now about what's expected of them this coming weekend and weekends down the line? Well, one comparison is, you know, the young guys in the, the games of preseason, you know, the games before conference season starts, we're playing, then we have to stress that once conference season starts, the intensity picks up again. And it's kind of like that. You know, you, you're coming off your, everybody's coming off their conference tournaments, and, and uh, the intensity is going to step up one notch because it's do or die. You know, if you lose, you're out. Brett and I have both been to the tournament, and we've been conveying those feelings uh, the last half of the year, you know, and it's important for us to get victories. And, and uh, now that we've made it, uh, you know, it's, it's back to the drawing board. Uh, everybody's zero and zero, and, and uh, we're going to hopefully uh, give, give a good showing. Chad said it uh, very well. The intensity level really picks up. Uh, you think of the intensity uh, in conference play, but I think it even increases as you get into to postseason play and you get in the big dance. You know, when you look at the NCAA, and, and it's a great indication of the parity we have in college basketball today, if you get past the one and two seeds, uh, you take the rest of those ball clubs, there's very little difference uh, when you go all the way to uh, 48 for sure. Uh, and that's why there'll be so many great games, and that's why, uh, you know, uh, it's not like the NBA where you play a series. But on a one-night shot, uh, you're going to see a lot of upsets, or at least the favorite may not win. Uh, I noticed uh, our game with George Washington is almost a, a toss-up, mm -hmm. uh, according to what you read in the newspaper. But uh, you'll see some teams that are highly favored that won't win just because of the balance we have in college basketball. Obviously, we're going to Lexington to win the games and get on back and take it on further. But it was important in the overall, the big picture, for this team that has so many youngsters to get a taste of this this season. Well, that's true. I'm happy for Chad and uh, Tommy and uh, Brett, the three seniors, that uh, they'll have an opportunity to play in the NCAA. But uh, for those young players, and we do have a lot of young basketball players on our team, hey, they're coming back. And this will give some valuable experience, uh, regardless of whether we get to go to St. Petersburg, which is where the uh, regional will be held. Uh, at least getting in the NCAA, that will give them a, a taste of something that we want every basketball team that we, we have to get in the NCAA tournament. If you get in the big dance enough times, well, who's to say you can't win a national championship? Well, the notebook and a few surprises are still on tap. We're going to get to them all after these brief messages. Don't go away. Well, welcome back to the show. Let's get right to the notebook. And, Eddie, it's a tough job. We were talking during the break. 
tough job seeding this tournament field. Seems to get tougher every year. Well, it is tough uh, because of the parity. We mentioned that, but you know, it, I, I really believe the four teams they seeded number one deserve it. But if you're going to look at someone who's got a great shot at winning the national title, the two of those teams are right in the in the South. I think Michigan. They won the Big Ten postseason tournament the first time the Big Ten's ever had that. They've been impressive late in the season. Kentucky won the SEC uh, regular season championship. They won the tournament. Those two teams, believe me, belong with those four, four first number one seeds. Those six teams, I think, are the best in college basketball. Beyond that, you're looking at Purdue. I think Clemson has a shot at being a dark horse, and maybe there's three or four other teams that could get to San Antonio. Isn't it amazing, though, every year, no matter what regional looks stacked or another one doesn't look stacked, there's always a Cinderella that comes up and makes it at least to the 16 or the round of eight. Well, I mentioned uh, Purdue and Clemson, but I, I, there's another team that you don't like as much as I do, but I think they have the potential, and that's the University of Cincinnati. They play tough defense. They have good shot selection. Uh, they rebound. They play hard. Uh, and, of course, anymore to me, if you get to the, to the Final Four, they ought to give you a national championship yeah, I agree. because that's how tough it is. Yeah. I mean, there's been so many good teams through the years and good coaches that have never gone there. And, uh, but in order to even get to the Final Four, you've got to get some friendly calls and you've got to get some lucky bounces. And, you know, there's always the risk of uh, somebody getting sick, somebody getting hurt. So uh, there's an element of luck involved in it. It's like winning four bowl games to get to the Final Four. That's exactly right. If you right. want to use an uh, analogy as far as college football is concerned. Now this final item, Coach of the Year. Seventh such honor for you in a conference, four different leagues. Congratulations. A belated congratulations, but congratulations nevertheless. Well, I appreciate that, but I always say this, and I, I, I really am sincere about it. Head coaches get too much credit. Assistant coaches never get enough. And uh, I've been blessed through the years with some wonderful assistants. But this year, when you look at Sean, you look at Randall Dickey, you look at uh, Paul Graham, uh, those guys did a terrific job in bringing this young ball club together and having the season that we've enjoyed. Of course, we hope to be playing Duke on Sunday morning, Oklahoma time at 11:10 tip-off. But later on on Sunday afternoon, the Cowgirls are back in action. You might want to tell them about that. You know, there were a lot of disappointed people that uh, were on the bubble in the men's tournament that didn't get to go. Well, our women really played terrific uh, down the stretch. Uh, they did well up in Kansas City. Uh, they got uh, to the semifinals. They were beaten, I think, by four or five points by Texas Tech, a number one seed in the women's NCAA. And I think everybody around here thought that they were going to get a bid. They didn't get a bid, and uh, all of us were disappointed. But they are playing in the N NIT, and uh, they host Rice a Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock in the first round of the NIT. So I would hope all of the people that are watching in Oklahoma uh, we'll get up there to gallagher Iba and uh, fill that arena up and uh, give our gals a, a lot of support because they certainly deserve it. And it's a great value as well. $6, $4 tickets, uh, 6 for adults, 4 for student and youth. So uh, it's a good afternoon's work. And again, hopefully you'll be able to watch the Cowboys at 11 o'clock in the morning and then get on up there. Still have plenty of time to watch the Cowgirls take on Rice. Now, we hit this last week, and uh, it's still further down the line, but not too early to call that basketball office and get in line for your basketball camps. Look at that youngster right there. That's what's fun. I, you know, there's no pressure for us to win in the summertime. <laughs> and uh, I started, I guess, some of the first basketball camps. 1959, when I went to Tulsa Central, uh, I had a basketball camp. And uh, it's always one of the highlights of the year for me. But we're going to have a big camp this year. We've already got a lot of uh, campers enrolled. But if, if someone's interested in bringing their, sending their son or grandson, uh, call us at the 405-744-5845. That's the basketball office. Again, because of our production schedule, we had to tape this show before we left for Lexington, Kentucky. Hopefully when we meet you next week, we'll be talking about a Sweet 16 birth. For Eddie Sutton and our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody.